There are no avenues for meaningful career development for black employees, regardless of their contributions. The institution relies on non-advertised processes to create advantage for some and disadvantage for others. That's Bernadette Butchie, a former employee of the Canadian Human Rights Commission, speaking to a Senate committee earlier this month. In her testimony, she recounts her experience of being denied promotions at the commission, despite her qualifications, while she watched her colleagues get promoted without competition. In March, the federal government's own HR wing ruled that the Canadian Human Rights Commission discriminated against its black and racialized employees. But Butchie says that had been clear to her for a long time. Long before any investigation took place, it was commonplace for staff to speculate about how a complainant is imagining things. It couldn't possibly be about race. They must be lying. According to the commission's own records, it rejects discrimination complaints that are based on racism at a higher rate than any other category of complaint. Nicholas Marcus Thompson is the executive director of the Black Class Action Secretariat, which brought a class action lawsuit against the federal government on behalf of all of its black employees in 2020. Nicholas, good morning. Welcome to Day 6. Good morning. Thanks for having me. When did you start paying attention to concerns around racism at the Canadian Human Rights Commission? Actually, around uh, 2020 is when we started organizing. Uh, myself, um, at the time, I was a union president uh, representing workers at the Canada Revenue Agency. And at that agency, which was one of the largest employers, we recognized a very troubling trend, which was black employees were in entry-level positions. Some racialized employees were just above that, non-black and that the executive of the Canada Revenue Agency was reserved for white employees. Mm -hmm. As part of our review, we started looking outside of the CRA, and then we started finding the same thing, that black employees were being excluded from promotional opportunities, exceptionally qualified, but remained in entry-level positions for decades, while new employees would come in and uh, climb all the way up Uh, to the top. We're talking about people with multiple degrees serving for decades, retiring after 30 years, 40 years in the same entry-level positions, their pension impacted, their mental health, the generational impact to their family uh, as well. I I had some hope, uh, Brent, I have to say I had some hope when I went to the Canadian Human Rights Commission. When I landed at that department mandated to protect uh, and to promote human rights, the workers there told me a very different story. What were the employees telling you? They told me that they were facing the same challenges that black workers face across the public service. The supervisors, managers, and executives, those positions were predominantly white employees, and they did not have the opportunity to excel. And they told me how when they made decisions on a race-based case that came before them, how their white supervisors were rejecting those cases at a disproportionate rate uh, compared to non-race-based complaints. And were you surprised? I mean, this is the Human Rights Commission. Were you surprised that this department of all departments would have these issues? I had my doubts, but I had hope. I thought that they would be the standard bearer. After all, in order for Canada to meet its human rights obligation domestically and internationally, it required a functioning Human Rights Commission that protected human rights. Federal employees rely on the commission to hear their grievances around discrimination. Tell us about the role the commission plays once it receives those complaints. The commission plays a very important role, not only to federally regulated employers and employees, but to the Canadian public, any member of the Canadian public that has uh, in an interaction with a federal institution or federally regulated institution can file a complaint on one of the protected grounds under the Canadian Human Rights Act to this commission. And for it to be discriminating against its own workers, and not only its own workers, but it's discriminating against the Canadian public as well. It is completely egregious. So if the commission finds that a case is not worthy of being looked into, what is the recourse that the complainant then has? Then that complainant has very little recourse, especially if it's an employee of the federal government. They can seek judicial review. But who has the means to be able to do that and to wait those amount of years to go through that process? You 
just suffer in silence. What steps has the commission taken to address the findings of racism within the institution? The commission, it's failing. It's failed in its mandate. So what we are calling on is for the government of Canada to address anti-black racism and systemic discrimination by making sweeping amendments to Canada's Employment Equity Act. This is the legislation that employers like the commission uses to exclude black employees. This piece of legislation creates four categories for protection, indigenous people, women, visible minorities, and people with uh, disabilities. When it comes to visible minorities, it's essentially everyone that is not white or indigenous. Mm -hmm. To meet employment equity, and there's usually a gap, federal employers have their preferred visible minority or racialized group that they would use for employment equity, and it's usually not black employees. So to address this issue, we're calling on the government of Canada to create a designated category considering black people's historic oppression in Canada to finally recognize black people as a distinct category under the Employment Equity Act so federal employers cannot hide behind visible minority and discriminate against black people. Your organization also brought a class action lawsuit against the federal government on behalf of all of its black employees, alleging similar issues. What is the status of that lawsuit right now? The the lawsuit is awaiting what's called certification. It's where the federal court will determine if it meets the definition of a class action to move forward to actually a trial. Mm -hmm. Canada has filed motions to dismiss the class action, saying that workers have redress through the grievance process and that workers can go to the Canadian Human Rights Commission for redress. Okay, so, (laughs) and what is the irony here? So the commission that the government has found guilty of discrimination against black people, it is telling the court that workers should turn to this commission for justice. Okay, but the commission says it has addressed some of these findings now. What what do you make of what the commission says it's it's done to try and improve? The commission's actions is completely performative. And let me give you a key example of that. As part of one of the measures to address anti-black racism, it brought in an external consultant, prominent uh, consultant, whom we have confidence and trust in, to do this work. The mandate of the consultant was not to provide any written reports. The, the, the consultant was instructed to not put anything in writing. Correct. So so it would be a verbal report. So only verbal reports. There's no transparency, there's no accountability, and their efforts are deceptive because Canadian taxpayers are paying for this report that we don't know what it is. The commission also says that the rate at which it dismisses race-based cases has gone down between 2017 and 2021. What do you think about that? Well, to say that that's equal to saying, well, we discriminated against people less this year, that is unacceptable. There should be no discrimination at the commission created to address discrimination. What does it tell you? that the Canadian Human Rights Commission, the very institution meant to address systemic inequalities, is engulfed by these issues now. What does it say about the civil service at large? It tells us how deeply entrenched systemic discrimination and particularly anti-black racism is throughout our public service. Canada is viewed on the world stage as a beacon of hope for human rights. That is not a fact when we look at the Canadian Human Rights Commission and at all of its institutions. Brent, this is equivalent to state-sponsored discrimination. The state is actively discriminating against black and racialized and indigenous uh, employees. There's also an indigenous class action alleging the same thing. Nicholas Marcus Thompson, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Nicholas Marcus Thompson is the executive director of the Black Class Action Secretariat. The Canadian Human Rights Commission told us the representation of black employees in its executive team has increased from 6% in 2020 to 14% in 2022. It also said the independent facilitator didn't issue a public report in 2021 because employees had participated in the investigation with the understanding that what they said would be confidential and anonymous. The Commission said it has told the Senate Standing Committee on Human Rights that it is fully prepared to undergo an independent third-party workplace assessment with a public report. 